tying with us, let us know. We are recording this so you can watch it on YouTube later. Hit pause and start whenever you want. Um, if you can't tie with us tonight, uh, you'll be able to reference this later on. We get them uploaded to our playlist um, for Nevada Department of Wildlife in about a week or two, as long as uh, they don't need to edit it. So um, we should be good. And um, so I'll talk to you on the side here. And then I do have the um, tying cam up here. And for you, we'll just start with this presentation and our intro presentation. And then um, so that if you want to see me while I'm tying, you'll want to do your settings to speaker view. And then that way I'll be on the side and then we'll have our spotlighted camera here on the right. Um, feel free to type in questions throughout. Um, Nicole is with us. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next slide. Um, Nicole will moderate for us, um, her awesome self on the bottom there. And um, it's a family friendly program. Thank you for supporting us and logging in today. We are the Nevada Department of Wildlife Conservation Education Division. We, I teach fishing and angler and aquatic education. Uh, we also have hunter education, archery education, our volunteer program, and um, public relations with anything wildlife and habitat. Um, if you are going to tie with us, please let us know. Um, that way I can just make sure I pause and start. If you have any questions, um, again, jump out at us and let us know. Um, the amazing thing about this is I was able to go to one of the sports stores yesterday, um, get a few last minute uh, chartreuse options for you guys, because this is the color bass and crappie really like down here. Um, you can see the background behind me. I have um, Kirch, our reservoirs. We have Adams and the Gill and Cold Springs, which are great for crappie, bass, and trout. Um, so I just wanted to kind of reference one of our awesome places that you would be able to use these jigs. Um, again, if you have any questions about the waters or anything fishing, um, it's a very interactive program. So um, we'll get started. Um, just wanted to show you what we're imitating. The obviously um, fish survive on insects and other small fish. So uh, I was able to, this is actually my picture. Um, we had an emerging damselfly land on my tackle bag. Um, so I was very careful to not scare it off. And I wanted to show you why we use certain colors. This one looks a little more brown. It was definitely brighter green. Um, I don't know why it turned out so brown um, <clears throat> in the picture. Maybe it's the overlay. But um, he was definitely almost the chartreuse color. And um, I do have a UV light above me, uh, just so that you can kind of see how bright it will look with some of the materials I'm using. Um, so we'll go ahead and stop the PowerPoint here and then spotlight. Oh, and thank you for the poll. Um, if you guys can answer this, it is totally optional, um, but anonymous. It just gives us an idea of how many basics I should go over. And I guess another good question is how often do you guys, have you ever made your own lure, fly, anything like that? Um, any of, anything awesome, very cool to see new people. Here is the um, results for you guys. So you can see we're all over. Very awesome to see regular anglers in here too. Definitely just want to show how easy and convenient it is and the options for you guys. So, oh yeah, it always zooms out. So I'm gonna zoom back in there. All right. And then spotlight this video. There we go. So I should be up top for you guys or to the side. This will be our spotlighted video and we should be good. All right, so I have my materials laid out. All right, so mainly we're gonna use a jig head. I'll get that. I was able to get a nice little starter kit to show you guys what I'm using. Just got a nice little 
jig head kit here with a few different options. Um, definitely the white in there. Grabbed red and white yesterday. If we have time, I'll do two jigs and then one woolly bugger. But I just really wanted to give you all the options and show you how easy it can be for you. Ouch. So we're going to use three materials and then four for the woolly bugger. So just a nice simple fly, fly tying vise set here. Make sure that's clamped in. There we go. I tightened it up for to do a rooster tail, and I think I over tightened it. There we go. All right. All right, so sometimes with these basic ones, you gotta adjust for what you're working with. So with these jig heads, obviously the hook is a little bigger. All right, that should work. Okay, so first things first, went with chartreuse line so it all blends together. So you can use any sort of thread. Um, and while I'm doing this and setting it up, how, I didn't see any answers, but if you could answer, um, if you have tied flies, tied any lure, made anything like that, So you just go back and forth over the line and pull that there. I just, I don't wanna go over too much if you all have tied before. So it's kind of the basic fly tying techniques, but it's with a jig head instead. And we're going for bass instead of trout, which is what most people think fly tying all is. So um, another really cool thing is the marabou. So really cool found this one was a UV marabou. So it glows a little more. There couldn't hurt, right? I'll try this one out. And you always test it, test your tail. This one's gonna be kind of thin, so we're gonna try and find another one. And you can always trim them up to bulk them up too. So there we go, that one's a little better. Nice and slow. It always helps to get the hand a little wet. So my cups, oh, sorry, back here. So that'll be a good tie. So then we switch hands and I'm gonna clamp it right on top. I don't cut it yet. It's easier to cut afterwards. And then tie it back and forth right there up above the bend. That holds it all in there together. All right, and then go back up. Oh, very cool. Yes, trying to um, bring back memories, right? Every once in a while. So very cool to see that some have grown up doing this. So hopefully can get that going for you again. All right, so simple. I'm just gonna go all the way up. Uh, because it's a jig head and we have this bulk right here, I'm actually going to stop here and um, tie on the marabou. So, um, or I'm sorry, chenille. 
So chenille and marabou, come, all these things come in a bunch of different colors. So here's going to be the chartreuse that I'm going to use. Another option I really liked um, is this neon green. It's a little longer, so it'll be a little more uh, fluffy, but it has a, it's called cactus. So it's a little shinier. Um, so that's always an option. Um, and actually while I'm here, the first thing we're going to tie on is the flash. So I'm just gonna add a little UV flash. Um, you can kind of see it looks a little flat on your screen. Um, it's kind of purple in the UV light. So I just take out two strands bend them over back and forth. I'm gonna trim them after. And you can kind of test it along here. So what I do is get it nice and straight, bend it over the line I'm gonna tie. And actually I'll go back a little more um, so that we can have more in the tail. I don't want it too far back. So we'll go to the body and then tie it in there. There we go. And then just go over the top to hold it on top and in place. Make sure it catches. There we go. And then go back forward. All right, so there we go. Got that in there now too. Like I said, trim all these pieces off and then um, you can kind of see how obviously it's looped there and you just pull it out and you can even run the scissors all along there. They don't have to be the same length um, but you definitely want it to catch the attention. So it can be wings, um, it's an imitator and an attractor all in one. All right so now we're going to tie in are we went with, I went with ice dub chenille and that way we have a little shine in this too and then I tie it right on top um cool trick too with these is just pinch off the end and you get the back up a little and you get those two little threads looks like two most of the time tie that in and that way it's nice and thin Hold it in place really good. Hold it up top. I'm gonna lay it right on top there and keep tying it in. And this doesn't have to be too pretty. This just has to hold in place. And we're gonna go all the way back here so that we can start the body. All right, and now that we have that, I'm actually going to go forward. So that I can um, catch it and we're going to, I'm going to actually stop right there. And I'll show you why. All right, so this one came without the middle, so I guess less garbage, but um, then you have to kind of hold it, then I don't have to cut extra off. If you are guesstimating and want to just cut it off for ease, um, I would do about a foot or not even a foot, half a foot and just do like a hand. My hands are kind of small, but, um, and for you guys to see, I should probably do that. Get some of the other marabou off. And I'm gonna do it a little thicker back here. So that we have a nice kind of even body. Going back and forth. And then you can see how it bulks up because we have that underneath. And I'm gonna hold this up top. And always go in the same direction. Make sure I pinch that off right on top. 
that'll hold that down. And honestly, that is it. So bend it back towards you guys so you can see it more. There you go, and that's it. You can kind of see it uh, end. Little bend there kind of sticks out. Creates a bulk, but it's okay. I can pull that up too. There we go. All right. So just double check. And then um, you don't even need a half hitch hook. And it actually kind of got caught up because of the eye being below. I just grab two fingers and make a little square loop around the head, pulling it back on top. So again, two fingers looping around. It creates a little knot over and over again, and I do it about four times. Making sure it catches. There we go. And grab some super glue or even a little nail polish. Um, and then you can also get the UV clear coat, uh, some head cement. All of that works really well. Also ties this in so it doesn't fray if you get a big bite on it. Any questions on this one? All these materials were in stock, so sometimes if you can't find the Marabou jigs, at least you can find these guys. I'll do one more to tie it into the glue. And then cut off right below. These little scissors, you can even use like little nail scissors are good. So honestly, don't necessarily have to buy the whole vice set. You just need something to hold this jig head and then you just need these two materials. And honestly, like this little bunch here, um, you could probably make 10 jigs for not too much. And I say that um, if you can find them, that's awesome. But if you need to make them, I definitely wanted to share this with you guys. So something to catch the crappie bass uh, trout, honestly. Um, or my father-in-law is going to test this out up north on some trout and see if uh, they go after the chartreuse. Usually it's more of a warm water species color like bass or something. So um, we'll let you know and feel free to email anytime. I'll leave the email afterwards. If you have any questions about anything, let me know. All right, next one with almost the same materials. So we're going to do a number 12 or 10 or eight, whatever you have, a little streamer hook here. Zoom in a little bit more. There we go. And I got um, another bobbin started and we're gonna do olive on this one. But almost the same materials. The only thing I add to this one is gonna be a hackle. Make sure you don't hook the hook. All right, a little bulky there, but that'll work. It's definitely not going anywhere. There we go, make sure. There we go. All right, so first thing is the tail again. So grab olive this time. So all my favorite colors, white, chartreuse, and olive. Those three pretty much can catch everything in Southern Nevada. Actually pretty much around the Southwest. So find a good fluffy tail here. And this, we want this one. And just cut it. 
All right, it's the same thing. Just going to pinch it on top, kind of loose, make sure it's on there good, and then tighten it down. Make sure I go back and forth, make sure it's not going anywhere. There we go. It's easier when you don't have the draft. <laughs> Sometimes you can get um, these tufts, you could probably, the way I cut it, if you um, stacked it and held it tight, you could get another um, smaller woolly bugger um, out of it, but it'd definitely be a little smaller. You can see the tail size difference. Also, I have one cool little thing. Um, I did spinners last week on the webinars and was able to do one with a tail uh, to kind of create a, a rooster tail style lure. So spinner with a tail. There we go. We're gonna cover all that up again. So we'll go all the way forward to tie in the chenille. So this one's gonna be all olive. Oh, there we go. I thought it was right here. All right, so we are going to add a pocket. Always have backup. So this one's a little thinner, so we will um, tie this one a little thicker too. And this, what I'm trying, I'm trying to show you guys. is we'll make this guy okay. hair everywhere from the tails. All right, so tie this one in. It's the same thing. Go ahead and take a foot or more, because this one's gonna be a little thicker. And we're gonna make a little body out of this. This one we don't need to cut the strings off. So thin, and then just keep it on top. Go back. And this one, I'm also going to um, add a little tail in real quick. So different, um, it's all up to you how you want to do this too. You can tie in your tail early, late, um, all the steps are to you, whatever makes sense. I am going to go with polar uh, flash, so just a little silver. I'll just grab one more. I like to do two, just definitely more visible. These two are already together. There we go. So bend once. And twice. And then that way, that'll bend over. There we go. Make sure it catches. Set it right on top. And again, cover it up. Make sure it's stuck in place. All right, 
and as we put the um, body on with the chenille, this will all flatten out. All right, go ahead and push that down some more too. There we go. All right, and then go back uh, forward. And then tie on our body. Definitely want darker or thicker. Any questions about anything? Any of your favorite colors? for jigs, for any of these flies. Um, also, you don't have to be a fly fisherman to want to tie a woolly bugger. You just want to um, maybe use a bobber so that it's suspended because it is going to look like an emerger. So go back and forth on this. So definitely, um, an option is to go for bass and then just give it a little action in the water. So there we go. I got a uh, body there. All right, and then to give it the lifelike like wings or little legs, we're going to add on the hackle. So I got this one ready, nice green. Give it more color there too. The other option um, people like to use is a grizzly hackle. So it's white and dark. Um, but this one I definitely want to stick more to the green. I'm just going to strip off this top front and tie this right on top. And then I'll cut that off. Clean up the front there. All right. And as we're tying it, we're going to want to make sure we bend sideways. And that it fans out. Kind of keep it nice and straight. And another awesome tool, these little clamps here, put it on there, and then it holds it down and in place for you. I'll hang it back there, put all that down, and we're going to slowly go back to tie this off in between. Make sure we don't lay any down. Try to in between them. Just go every other just to get back to the back and tie this off. One more. And then switch without pulling too hard. We're actually very sensitive. We'll make sure it's tied off. All right. There we go. And we'll cut this off back here very carefully in between everything. And go forward. Also, again, going in between, making sure they're standing up. Just 
Good, there you go. All right, and then half hitch it right off the front. So with this one, it's a little easier to grab the uh, pin uh, with a little stick here and then half hitch it right to behind the eye. And then again, just make a circle that it loops on itself, cover up that eye and it'll go right behind. And then make sure you don't get any of the others. There we go. And then one more. All right, and glue that. And grab that pin again, make sure the glue's not on your eye, but covering the thread. And again, one more. Switch the ends over that eye so you don't have glue in there. And make sure the thread is in the glue. There we go. And done. Now we have this imitator attractor. And then you can go through, clean it up, make sure the tail is nice and flat. Um, leave it on the vise for some pictures to show off to your friends. And then you can even cut these if they're like too long. Um, and then kind of straighten it out too. All right, we've got that. So we did two potential bass fly lures in 30 minutes and not too much money. Um, and that way it's, a, you know, you can have that. You can do that and catch awesome, awesome bass with these guys. This looks just like their food source. So any questions? Did you guys want to see any other colors? And there we can compare this guy to that guy too. All Thank you. Yeah, I'll be doing more of these. The next one I wanted to show you guys. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you what I was working on today. Um, so uh, off to the side. I'll do it in front of him. So I did the move that out of the way. I took, I made the spinner. Um, we made these last week. I gotta hold these both up. We made spinners last week. And then this week, same setup. I just uh, did the treble hook. Sorry, it's off to the side on the angler cam. There we go. So did the treble hook. Make sure you're on gallery view. I disappeared again, there we go. Um, Trying to get, there we go. Trouble hook, and then I tied on the marabou again, um, and also trimmed it up nicely so it covers it. And then same thing, just glued it down. Where are we at? Glued it down, add some beads, and then a spinner. So here's our rooster tail imitator. So this is another option. We'll do another class on all these. Um, before you leave, as you leave, there is a survey, please fill it out. Let me know what other kinds of classes you guys wanna see, any other information I can help you with, please let me know, email me. Email's on the left there. Um, love doing these classes and any way I can help, please let me know. We're doing education classes for kids too in aquatic education. We have a electronic microscope, so we'll be able to do some macro invertebrates too, and hopefully get some more bugs for you guys to check out and see what the fish are eating out at the ponds um, or the parks or the state parks and national parks. So uh, please let us know what you're interested in. It was a pleasure. Thank you, and thank you, Nicole, for helping out today. So any questions, let me know. Thank you guys for coming. There's also, um, as you're leaving, red and white's always a good attractor too. And then you can do um, a white chenille with a little flash too. So 
option is that? So lots of options. All right, thank you all. Have a good night and hopefully I'll see you all later. Thank you.